Good evening and welcome to another Big Muscles Midnight Massacre. My voice sounds um, not too enthusiastic. You can see in the title up above what we watched tonight. It's Alone in the Dark. It's what you made us watch. Now, I made us watch because one of the other movies we did had Tara Reid in it. I was like, oh. So, and there's another video game horror movie by the director of your favorite movie, I mean, House of the Dead. That's which true. you love. You know what? That's why I can't I can't come too hard for him hit for him because really. he gave me something that brings me so much joy in my life. Right, right. But alone in the dark is not watching that. this was it's not easy. Why don't we? Uh, how are we gonna get through this? Wanna? We're gonna have some whiskey. Okay. Cause that's what explorers do. Archaeologists. U.A. Bull strikes again. I think this is his second or third film. I don't fucking know. People, let us know in the comments what the deal with U.A. Bull was. Was it a German scam to get money? He had to not put that much money into it. So then he got tens of millions of dollars. I don't know. It was very confusing. Whatever, you know. Like I said, God bless. It brought me House of the Dead, so I you can't. You can't complain. But I'm gonna. <laughs> me too. So... I've never watched this through ever. I watched like the first 10 minutes and I was like, this is shitty, but whatever. So at one point, I was like, no, i never seen it. And then you put it on and I'm like, I may have seen it. Like, but I may have but locked you still it don't out. Know. Like, I still don't know. That's fine. Okay. Um, so it is a very loose adaptation of Alone in the Dark. Loose in the fact that I don't think it's based on Alone in the Dark at all. Except for the fact that it stars uh, Christian Slater as um, Edward Carnby. And I've heard some people in my in my comments for other videos say that they think that the newer Alone in the Dark game, the one that got released on the 360 PS3, is actually loosely based on this. And I'm like, that's messed up. Who would do that? Because I needed so many explanations. I was really up in the IMDb. Ooh. Yeah, what's that bit about it? Uh, no, the is opening. that he... Oh, that I'm gonna get to. Yeah. No, but he changed the ending that wasn't the video game ending because he wanted it to be more ambiguous. I still don't understand. Listen, I'm gonna just put this out here right now. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't understand anything. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not you the greatest to do a review when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But because of I didn't get anything, I think what I read on IMDb, some of the earlier screenings, yes. like the test screenings, I can't believe nobody I understood screen. anything. Yeah. So they. Added this is scrolling text at the beginning of the movie a, to explain a, everything. And it's like a good minute and yeah. a half. Because they're text. like, no, everyone was so confused about the storyline and what was actually happening that they did a like Star Wars text of like the this old civilization and this, like, basically to try and like help people be like, oh, okay, get a better grasp on what's actually happening, but it doesn't help. I don't, because I was trying to like disassociate well, I mean, myself from that opening text scroll. I was trying to be like, what if I didn't see that? Would I understand this? There's one aspect I think I would understand, but let me let me throw out some of the players. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I, like we can kind of make sense of this. Mm -hmm. There's Edward Carnby, who was one of several orphans that were experimented on by an organization called 7-Eleven. 7-13. 7-thir doesn't matter. So like 10,000 years ago, there's this ancient civilization that were fighting the forces of darkness because there's the forces of light and they just mysteriously disappeared. Then the agency of 7-Eleven decided we're going to investigate all these artifacts that they left and that'll do something. And there's sleeper cells of the orphans and they have worms in them. And that also does something? Because the, didn't the monsieur like experiment on the... Which monsieur? Oh, one of the scientists? Which guy? There's two mean? of them right there. There's a couple. There's an old guy. And Tara Reid works for him. Yeah, yeah, the curator of the museum. Now, when I see Tara Reid, the first thing I think of is museum curator. No, she has her glasses on and her hair is pulled back in a bun. That makes you know. She that. knows about all the ancient languages. Yeah, and despite the fact that she never does anything remotely, like, smart, she literally just stands there and doesn't really do anything. She like, reads the stuff. Does like, she? When they're down in the tunnels later, she's like, everyone who enters here is already dead. Or like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what they are 
whatever the fuck it was. I think it is literally she just quotes a lie from just the door stuff. She just says whatever. They're gonna believe her. They don't. They don't know ancient Afghani. Afghani. Oh my god. It's so cut so close to, to Afghani. Cut to there's a big war with a bunch of xenomorph aliens. And then that's it. That's the movie. And it's in different locations, and it's just so boring and uninteresting and repetitive and the same. Who else stars in this? It was oh. the other guy that appears. Steven Dorff. Steven Dorff, Deacon Frost himself, just shows yeah. up. And you said, it's the Dorff! It's the Dorff! I said that a couple times. So, um, <laughs> he, he's one of the guys that works for 7-Eleven, and... Uh, he's like, Edward, I don't trust you. And he's like, Because Edward used to be part of 7 Eleven, but then she'd be branched out. But he says he's still an investigator, but he's and not. He works part time for 7 Eleven. Um, it is. I'm just like, my eyes listen, are listen. It's... We watched The Legend of Halloween Jack. I oh, think okay. that this. Gotta bring that. I, I know. I, let me finish. Um, that was a better movie than this by far uh, because you can at least laugh at that. And that movie didn't really take itself so seriously. Or it was shot so poorly that you can laugh at it. But this was shot just competently enough where you can't really, like, haha, look at that. And everyone takes it super seriously. Like, you know, it's like one of the Resident Evil movies, but even less fun stuff and monsters. Remember when it seemed like the movie is going to be like, here's some new monsters. Yeah. And you just shouted, it's so boring. And I was like, <laughs> what? The monster? Like, what do you mean? Like, the monsters, the monsters, it's the same one. It's the same the generic, monster. you can't even tell what it is. It's just like a black looking, like, leathery monster that looks like a xenomorph. And they're called... God, they gave him some stupid name, uh, uh, Xenobes or something. Like they even call them that. And what happens is a huge fight with 7-Eleven soldiers, and they're just shooting guns for like a good 20 minutes. And it's not like Aliens or like Predator or like whatever. There's dynamic shots and there's all these interesting. It's just this. They, they just just a wall of lead. And that's it. And the monsters just slowly pick everyone off. And There's that one scene where Terry and Christy Slater are also shooting a bunch of people, but we don't know if it's the other orphans or the xenomorphs. And, but then there's also shots of the 7-Eleven guys shooting them, and they're intersliced together to like some like hardcore music. And yeah, it's trying to be like that epic scene from like, you kept saying like, that's the one, it's the cost of the dead, except no one knows what's going on. I don't know where they are, who they're shooting, who's shooting who, what these other guys are doing. All I know is that the shots have been like, we're also shooting. We're like Lara Croft, but complicated and no one understands or knows what's going on. And I'm like, I have, Zero idea what's happening. I kept looking over here. I'm like, I have no idea what's happening. And even up until this point, all the Alone in the Dark games come out were like slow paced Resident Evil style things. You're killing one okay. or two monsters at a time. Like the other ones take place in like like industrial era London or something. Sorry, I'm getting that wrong. And the other one was kind of like a reboot where they made him into a cool edgy guy. Kind of like... Uh, Christian Slater tries to play here. He's terrible in this, but then again, hey. everyone's terrible in this. Compared to everyone else, he's amazing. I guess. So always have a soft spot for Christian Slater, you know what I mean? Like, fucking Heathers. Heathers! Okay, Sorry. calm down. And also, he's in one of my favorite movies. He's like, true romance. Christian right, Slater is right, like my right. favorite Christian Slater. Like, I can't... So, how does it feel so watching him in schlock like it this? It felt like he really good, needed huh? a paycheck. Like, I feel I like his but, rent was late. But, but, like, even Tara no Reid to the government. and Stephen Dorff, like, why would they sign on to this? Oh, like, I know why Tara Reid signed Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, but, even then, like, I'm just like, this is so below even, like, you know, C or D tier celebrities. Or why would you even be in this? And I, I think the most baffling part, because we're not even going to bother saying likes and dislikes. Well, yeah, no, 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 dislikes. it's just dislikes. But I think they're in an underground cave in the city that's like underneath oh, like some city yeah, shit, yeah. like in like a downtown area, and it's night. And they say there's it's four hours until daylight. I think they, yeah. someone says. They go down, and I want to say it's like a half hour of like movie the time. Epic ending showdown. They, they go into this deep underground cavern. They walk for like a minute and then they're out in the country in broad daylight. They open up at like, the orphanage. They're at the orphanage that was in the country where it's just green pastures and chestnut trees and all that shite. And I, 
you you're looking at your phone. I don't blame you. I did not. I did not have my phone. I forgot it, <laughs> and I was too lazy to go get it. So I'm watching, and this is the moment where I like just blew an ass gasket. I'm just. I, they come out and it's like broad daylight, like it's yeah. noon. Well, okay, four hours of daylight, that's fine, but it's just where they were. Fine, they can be, let's say the tunnels led them, we don't know, maybe it was further into a rural area. It was area. such a short but walk. But it was... Uh, it doesn't so, make sense. It's not like they didn't get into a no, mine okay. cart and they drove, drove yeah. down, but it kind of makes sense to the orbit. It's not oh, when the yeah. other location was downtown. Yeah, that was it was cool. messed up. And like you said, they changed, apparently changed the ending to be more ambiguous. The gate was closed again. But like the Abkhani discovered, there's a price to pay for bringing darkness into the light. It's one of the worst, like, where did everyone go? I don't know. Uh, it seems like everyone else disappeared, just like the Abkhani. <laughs> and then there's like a POV, like, Evil Dead camera shot. And it zooms into uh, Christian Bale and Tara Reid's face, and they're like, huh? And then it cuts to credits. And I was just like, wow! Yeah. Wow! Who You're would like, do such a so thing? so happy the movie's over. UA Bull, that's it. So UA Bull has stated on various occasions, I just read this, that he regrets having Tara Reid in the movie. That's what he regrets? Yeah. No, no, no. This is a, a classic case of, oh, everyone hates this movie, it sucked. Well, I guess it must have been Tara Reid's fault. And okay, she's not the best of actresses. She's not the main character. Okay, well, well her and... Christian Slater are like considered the two mains. Wish he wanted a uh, Jessica Alba and Christian Bale to be the two main. Bun shots, Monsieur. Bun fucking shots. I know that. That's great. That's what he wanted. That's a very UA so maybe Bowl he's style really, thing. really sad that he got Christian Slater and Tara Reid. If you didn't know this, UA Bull is the type of guy that will invite all of his movie critics to box him in a ring, and he'll like and real. Like, I'll pay you money to do this. So very Jay and Silent Bob, like, I'll find you uh, from the <laughs> internet trolling me, I'll come to your house and I'll put I'll you kick your face. ass, yeah. yeah. So, Alone in the Dark it is one of the worst things. Because, have I watched things that are shot worse? Do I have watched things with worse acting? We actually have, but this was so boring and just confusing, and it just felt like it was going on forever. So I think it's one it's, of the worst things I've watched like in a while. It was like mind-boggling. You, you like, you're like asking yourself, you're like, am I high? Am Did I, I smoke drugs? Am I, I a not? human in a body with eyeballs <laughs> watching this? Like, is this a movie? You're <laughs> just like, I was, it, was, it was in like disbelief of what was happening. Plus, this is like a 2000s, like 2005. 2005. It was still in 4x3. It wasn't even fucking shot in widescreen. I, mean, I was so crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so crazy. No, it's just like uh, older things were shot in widescreen than other okay. than this. Like, movies are usually in, anyway, whatever. Sure. It's another thing to just like shit on the shit pile yeah. alone in the dark. It has a cool poster, I'll say that. It's a creepy yeah, it's a little monster. spine it's, thing. It's a little spine monster, whatever. It's not gonna save it. It's really bad. That's the McMuscles Midnight Massacre. See you tomorrow night, I guess. Please come back. <laughs>